We'll give it to the deep man. Denson cutting it back up the middle. He's not going to have the first down. Michigan swarms him right at the line of scrimmage. They'll take over on down. Northwestern, nine men at the line. A fake to Howard. Greasy to throw. Blitz coming. He spins out of the arms of a man. Throws in the end zone. Touchdown, Michigan! Schultz back to throw. He's being pressured by Hall. Scrambles out of there. Now has Fidel in his face. Throws. Unbelievable. Made a spectacular interception. And somehow landed with a foot inbounds at the state 21. What a grab by Woodson. Greasy calling the signals. Turns. Fakes to Thomas. Rolls right. Has a man in the end zone. Touchdown. Jeremy Tuber. Sherman will throw. Steel coming, he gets picked up late. On the run, the pass away, intercepted by Sam Sword. Michigan will win the football game. Under seven minutes to go, third quarter, 24-0 Michigan. Handoff, Howard sweeping the right end, running room down to the 20, down to the 15, makes a nice move at the 10, the 5, dives over the top of Jason Collins, touchdown Michigan! Jackson to throw, looking right, now comes back, fires in the end zone, intercepted by Charles Woodruff! Polish off the Heisman! Make room on the battle! Charles Woodson took it away! From Michigan, Charles Woodson! <laughs> The fake to Howard. Greasy rolling right to throw. Looking downfield. Streets going deep. The long bomb from Greasy. Streets holds it in. Touchdown! He got behind Demar and Cola. Hold it in at the five and tie Streets has his second long touchdown grab of the ball game. Greasy bootleg right. Firing deep for Tubin. Touchdown Michigan! Off the play action fake. From all of the running plays, Jeremy Tooman busts open and Brian Greasy on the bootleg hits him from 23 yards out. You have left a wonderful legacy for every team that ever follows you. You just won the national championship. <laughs> The 1997 Michigan football team entered this season determined to climb a mountain. To reach the summit of this mountain was the impossible dream to most observers. This mountain was too tough. A schedule that included seven bowl teams from the previous year. It was the toughest schedule in the country. It was the toughest schedule in the conference. It was Mount Everest. The 97 Wolverines dug in and prepared for an 11-week climb. They never wavered in their belief that the mountain was too high or too tough. They merely went at it, one step at a time, with a no-surrender attitude. Colorado would be the first step. The Buffaloes were the top-ranked team in the country, according to the Sporting News. After they left Ann Arbor, the Buffaloes' top ranking was a distant memory. An attacking Michigan defense smothered Colorado completely. Third and 13 for the Buffaloes from their own 25. Hester will drop back to throw, has good protection, throwing deep down the left sideline. Woodson in coverage, picks it off at the Michigan 45-yard line. Two tight ends. Hessler will give it up the middle, and I'll tell you what, Herschel Trotman's going to be brought down in the backfield by Glenn Steele. Hessler will go back to throw. Blitz coming. He's going to turn left and run right into the arms of the Michigan Wolverines. Brought down back at the 40-yard line. James Hall making the hit back there. I think because of because of the, the pressure that the uh, that the line got on the quarterback allowed us to get some of those interceptions because they caused the quarterback to throw bad throws. Uh, when, he went, when he was releasing the ball, they were hitting him. And uh, any any quarterback, you know, that'll rattle him. And uh, that played into our favor. Offensively, the questions coming into the game were at quarterback and offensive line. Those questions were laid to rest by Brian Greasy, who got the nod as the starter just a week before the opener at a young group up front that played far more experienced than their years. Two backs in the backfield. Floyd gets the call up the middle, dives over the tip. Touchdown, Michigan! 
Greasy back to throw, short drop, looking left. Tosses to Howard across the goal line. Touchdown! He ran through a tackle at the one-yard line, pulled his way into the end zone, and the Michigan Wolverines have taken a 16-0 lead over Colorado. Split backs in the backfield on third and two. Greasy back to throw. Run it! For pocket, throwing into the end zone. Caught! Touchdown, Russell Shaw! Greasy answered the bell by going 21 of 28 through the air for over 250 yards and two touchdowns. It was a dominant performance that opened the eyes of the nation's football experts. The one thing we said when this season started, we ain't listening to them. We got one thing on our mind. That's Baylor. Man, we're going up that mountain, and we're going one step at a time. Uh, it's a great start to a season. Uh, to come out and play like that, you know, they had a lot of advantages on us, having a game, having a, you know, extra practice, and, and to come out and play like we did. You know, we had, we had our mistakes, but we were able to play over them, and, and it's just a great start for our season. In order to make this run, we got to get up each and every week to uh, do what we got to do. We got we to sustain the enthusiasm that we had today, and we got to sustain it for 12 weeks. The final was 27-3 Michigan. The victory vaulted the Wolverines from 14th to 8th in the national polls, and Baylor would provide their second step up the mountain. The Bears actually surprised Michigan by taking a 3 0 lead. The all they won. The Wolverines expected to score 38 unanswered points for a 30 victory. Along the way, Michigan unleashed two-way threat Charles Woodson on an unsuspecting Baylor defense. Greasy back to throw. He's throwing for Woodson. Wide receiver screen, right side, gets a couple of blocks, dives into the end zone, touchdown! Charles Woodson, nine-yard touchdown pass. Ryan Greasy and the Wolverines have taken the sixth lead over the Baylor Bears. Greasy was again outstanding, completing 13 of 22 for the day. In all, nine different receivers caught passes for Michigan in the onslaught. On the ground, Michigan erupted for 350 yards rushing. Freshman Anthony Thomas and senior Chris Howard both had over 100 yards as the offense was virtually unstoppable behind an offensive line that was gaining confidence on every snap. Sean Marshall, Thomas coming up the middle, pushing the pile into the end zone. Touchdown, Michigan! That's what linemen like to do. We like to run the ball, what we did, and got to love those running backs. They ran hard today, boy. They're good, real good players. On defense, the story was even better. Baylor managed just 154 yards of total offense. The Bears' best running back, Gerard Douglas, carried 12 times for just 12 yards. Through the air, Baylor managed just 62 total yards in 24 attempts, and the Wolverines picked off one pass. Total domination, total victory. We're just looking forward to next week, you know what I mean? This is a great win, but, you know, I think we're all, we want to put this behind us, and we're, all, we're excited, man. I'm already, I'm already excited, ready to go for uh, Notre Dame, so I'm looking forward to it. Indeed, Notre Dame will be the next step to the summit, and the toughest step yet. The aroused Irish came out and played their best game of the season and took a 14-7 lead at the half. For the first time all year, Michigan faced adversity. How would they respond to being down at the half? Nobody should have worried. In their first two possessions of the second half, Michigan erupted and erased the Notre Dame lead. Greasy back to throw, throwing right side for a streak. Good catch at the 30, 25, 20, angling toward the end zone. Touchdown, Michigan! 43-yard touchdown pass from Greasy to Street. Clarence Williams lined up slot left. To give us a Chris Ward running left side across the 10, across the 5, falls over a man into the end zone, touchdown! Great blocking on the left side. Chris Boyd was untouched until he was met at the 2. He absolutely ran over one of the Notre Dame defenders, and Michigan has taken a 20-14 lead. With a 21-14 edge going into the final quarter and momentum on their side, the Wolverines were poised for a big push and a blowout. But three straight times, Michigan turned it over in their own territory. It would now be a test for the defense. And with Notre Dame pushing for a score, the defense not once, but twice, rose to the occasion. 
third and goal from the Michigan nine yard line. Brown now in motion left. Hall is back to throw this time under pressure. Steps up. He's got running room right. He's now looking into the end zone. Throws this one is incomplete. Michigan holds up. Oh, it's intercepted. Intercepted. Intercepted Michigan. They get the ball back and kill the Notre Dame drive. This crowd roaring in Ann Arbor. Hollis will give it to the deep man. Denson cutting it back up the middle. He's not going to have the first down. Michigan swarms him right at the line of scrimmage. They'll take over on downs at their own 20-yard line. We put that defense in a bad situation a lot today, and uh, they stepped up. I'm really proud of uh, how the defense played. I mean, they, they went out there, and, you know, we had a lot of plays, and first half that really tired us out there and but I think the second half everybody sucked it up and you couldn't be prouder of um, uh, men today. The final score Michigan 21 Notre Dame 14. It was not just a win it was a coming of age. And yet they met a group of men from Michigan. <laughs> That would not be denied. Mm -hmm. And that's why you won, because you're Michigan. Yeah. 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 A road test against Indiana would be step four up the mountain, and the Wolverines rolled easily over the Hoosiers 37 to nothing. It was a 28-point second quarter that spelled the end of Indiana, and it was both offense and defense that buried the Hoosiers. Indiana jumps up front, flags down, free play for Greasy, he fires it, caught by Street, turns it upfield at the 10, he's into the end zone, touchdown Michigan! Anthony Thomas, the only setback, gets the handoff to a big hole on the left side, down to the 10, the 5, great downfield block by Marcus Knight, and he's into the end zone for a Michigan touchdown! They've got third and 22 right here. Six defensive backs in, Rodgers to throw, fires, shoots and picks it off at the 15. Boy, he was just cherry-picking out there. He tackled immediately at the Hoosiers' 14-yard line. A call still in there as the tailback in the formation. Is that Smith at fullback? It is. Doug Jackson. Handoff, McCall right side. And uh, he turns it upfield and gets down to the goal line and in for the touchdown. And Patrick McCall gets the Wolverines on the board again. Step five for Michigan would be a tough one. Defending Big Ten champion Northwestern came calling. And the last two times these teams met, the Wildcats were winners. A fact not forgotten by the Wolverines. We haven't beat Northwestern since I've been here. And, uh, you know, we own. You know, they're, they're a heck of a ball club. And uh, we, by no means can we overlook them. We need to stick it to them. It's very important. Through three quarters, the Wildcats played physical and tough. Michigan was clinging to a precarious 13-6 lead as the final 15 minutes started. It was now winning time. Brian Greasy then made the play that had to be made. Northwestern, nine men at the line. A fake to Howard Greasy to throw. Blitz coming. He spins out of the arms of a man. Throws in the end zone. Touchdown, Michigan! We had to do something in the fourth quarter offensively, which this is the first game all year we've had to do. And uh, I'm actually glad we, we had to do it because uh, it'll help us down the road. I thought it was going to be a sack. I think the guy who was supposed to have me man uh, blitz and pick up Greasy. And uh, Greasy made a great play and stayed alive and kept the play alive and got in the end zone. Greasy and Tuman's heroics were backed up a few seconds later by Charles Woodson. Now Northwestern down by a couple of touchdowns in the fourth quarter. Back to throw, Tim Hughes has a hand in his face as he delivers to the sideline, and it is intercepted by Charles Woodson, and he steps out of bounds around the 30. When it ended, Michigan had achieved redemption over Northwestern with a 23-6 win, an important win because youngsters had to step in and step up for injured veterans. Dahani Jones had to replace co-captain Eric Mays, lost for the season the week before. And David Brandt, a true freshman, had to step up for an injured Chris Zeman in the offensive line. They both answered the challenge. 
past two years, uh, we didn't win the fourth quarter, and that was a major emphasis this week, was uh, just playing hard the entire game and getting the fourth quarter nailed down, and then we did it. I realized I needed to come in there and step it up and, and fill the shoes that Eric Mays had filled and uh, just, just take care of business. I mean, there's a lot of things he taught me along the way. A lot of things he mentored me on the sideline. Uh, I just needed to go in there, just play my game, get to the ball as fast as I possibly could, and just have fun. Michigan was now unbeaten in five games and the air was getting thin as their climb to the summit moved to dangerous heights. Iowa would be the next step, and it would turn out to be the most hazard-filled step to date. In the first half, Michigan appeared to be in danger of losing their quest. Four times they turned it over. Greasy threw three interceptions. The defense allowed a big play for a touchdown to Iowa's Tavian Banks. And the special teams gave up a 61-yard punt return for a score to the Hawkeyes' Tim Dwight on the last play of the first half. It was 21-7 Iowa. Was it all coming apart? As Michigan went to the locker room at the half, facing the ultimate uphill climb, there was never a thought that the climb couldn't be made. To be honest, I never lost confidence uh, in myself. And I never lost confidence in my team. Uh, I'm just, for, we're just fortunate. The whole team is fortunate that we have a bunch of guys on this team that aren't concerned about themselves. They aren't concerned about individual stats. They're just concerned about winning. We believe in our offense. They believe in us. We're a team. We pull for them. They pull for us. And that's what it's going to take to get us to the championship. I mean, who knows? Some game, we might be giving up some points, and then they'll have to keep scoring points. So you never know. That's why we play the game. This is the um, type of um, games that you need to win when you're on your um when you're on the road to the championship um when you're behind by 14 points you know it showed a lot we showed a lot of character today to come out and stick together and to pull off this win character and heart indeed the wolverines were full of both they faced their most critical challenge in the final 30 minutes against iowa and on their first possession of the second half they responded Michigan lining up third and six at the 10. Greasy dropping to throw, gets pressure, steps up in the pocket, fires in the end zone, touchdown, Russell Shaw! He was wide open in the corner of the end zone, and Brian Greasy eluded the rush in the backfield from Jared DeVries and stepped up in the pocket and threw a confident 10-yard strike for the touchdown that gets Michigan on the board. Two possessions later, freshman Anthony Thomas provided the spark toward the tying touchdown. Second down, Thomas the freshman with the call up the right side, breaks loose, cuts to his left at the 50. Now it's a foot race down the left sideline. 30, 25, 20, he's bumped out of bounds. Inside the 10 by Eric Big Ten, the free safety. They'll mark him out at the four yard line. A greasy sneak from the one tied it up at 21, but the struggle wasn't over. An Iowa field goal made it 24 21 Hawkeyes. And with 7.25 left to play and 77 yards away from the go-ahead TD, it was time to put up or shut up. The Wolverines chose the former. Twice, Greasy found Tooman for big pass plays to keep the drive to victory alive. Thomas was running like anything but a freshman as the Wolverines marched inevitably up the mountain. And with 2.55 left to play, the comeback was completed. Greasy calling the signals, turns, fakes to Thomas, rolls right, has a man in the end zone, touchdown, Jeremy Tubin! Ryan Greasy! With a 28-24 lead in the closing moments, it was up to the Michigan defense to put it away. Sam Sword finally closed the door on Iowa. What backfield for Banks and Berger. Sherman will throw. Steele coming, he gets picked up late. On the run, the pass away, intercepted by Sam Sword. Michigan will win the football game. What happens when you get down like that and you're not playing well? Wow. It takes character, it takes <laughs> determination, it takes resolve. And that's what you showed today. And you showed the kind of unity, the kind of togetherness that only the great teams have. Great teams also play tough week in and week out. In order to achieve greatness, this Michigan team would be tested again and again. As they came away from their emotional win over Iowa, yet another dangerous step up the mountain lay ahead. Michigan State in East Lansing.
The Spartans wanted desperately to be the Wolverines undoing in their quest for greatness. And with under four minutes to go in the first quarter, a fake field goal caught Michigan unawares. Cedric Irvin's wide open TD staked Michigan State to a 7-3 lead. That's when the Michigan defense stood up and said no more. The Wolverines put the clamps on the Spartans' powerful running game, and they started harassing quarterback Todd Schultz, who threw into trouble, and Marcus Ray was there to pick it up. And back to throw goes Schultz. He's looking down the middle and guns it into traffic, and it's intercepted by Marcus Ray at the 30. He keeps oh. his balance out over the 35 to the 36, and the Spartans turn it over to the Wolverines. At that point, you could almost feel the frenzied Spartan faithful losing their faith. Michigan had accomplished the hardest of jobs in a hostile Spartan stadium. The very beginning, it was really loud, and it was hard to make calls and stuff like that, but then uh, we kept on playing, and they just quieted up, and that's the best feeling in the whole world. We came out, we played hard. We started off kind of slow down the first half, but once we got things rolling like we have in the past, I mean, it was our game, and we knew once we come out fired up in that second half, it was time to take over. It's a great feeling. It's a great feeling, you know. Uh, it's always good to come in a hostile environment and take over a stadium like this. You know? The Michigan offense then found its rhythm, and just before the half, backed up to their own goal line, Chris Howard turned momentum around. Handoff Chris Howard after that 10-yard pickup. He comes around the left side, breaks into the open, up to the 30, 35, has streaks and cuts the block. However, midfield, chase from behind, hit by Hill, fumbles the ball and grabs it out of midair and goes down at the Spartan 31. Wow, what a run! Whoever runs the ball well is going to win this game. I think that's what happened today. Our offensive line did a great job. Uh, Chris Floyd did a great job opening up some holes uh, for all the running backs in there. And uh, it just proved, you know, history is right. Whoever wins the ground game is going to win the game. With a 10-7 lead at the half and the pro Spartan crowd fearing the worst, Michigan gave them what they feared most, a dominant defensive performance. Five times the Wolverines picked off Spartan passes. The Michigan State running attack was throttled, and the pro Spartan crowd slowly left the building as the Wolverine defense made big play after big play. Schultz back to throw. He's being pressured by Hall, scrambles out of there, now has Fidel in his face, throws, and unbelievable! Made a spectacular interception, and somehow landed with a foot inbounds at the State 21. What a grab by Woodson. Well, I know he scrambled. We got pressure on him, made him make a bad throw. He lodged it up there in a place where I could get it, and I just went up and, and grabbed it. The final score was Michigan 23, Michigan State 7. The loss set the Spartans reeling. The win set Michigan higher up the mountain, looking for their next step. This team is not, uh, you know, built on letdowns anymore. You know what I'm saying? We did that the last three years. Uh, we're 7-0, which is uh, the first time we've been 7-0 for a long time. Uh, you know, we're just concentrating on getting on top of that mountain. You know what I'm saying? We're just trying to just trying to go to Rose Bowl. They got a few a few short passes that turned into some longer gains, you know, early on. And we knew we had to some, make some adjustment to that coming in at halftime. And fortunately, we got a lot more pressure on the second half. I told you uh, last Sunday that if we got this one, we were on our way, we were positioned to go to the summit. And I'm telling you now, if we don't change our attitude and our work ethic, men, there is nobody out there who can stop us. I mean that. The Golden Gophers of Minnesota would be the next to try to stop Michigan. During the year, the Gophers had flirted with two major upsets, losing a pair of one-point decisions to Penn State and Wisconsin. Would their third time be a charm? Not hardly. Charles Woodson left the Gophers in his wake on the first play of the second quarter. Greasy calling the signals, drops back, gives the ball to Howard on a reverse to Woodson, going left. He's got a convoy in front of him, heads down to the 25, 20, 15, 10, 5, touchdown Michigan! Charles Woodson, 33 yards on the reverse, and who throws a key block for him? None other than Brian Greasy, the quarterback. From that point on, the Wolverine offense was dominant. 
They rolled up nearly 400 yards of offense. They scored 17 unanswered points for a 24-3 lead early in the fourth quarter. On defense, it was an even more overwhelming performance. Michigan absolutely locked Minnesota up. The Gophers could manage just 12 yards net passing on the day. Overall, Minnesota gained a total of just 102 yards. It was total dominance. Well, as a secondary, you know, that's our job. And the lineman's job is to get that good pass rush. And they're giving us the good pass rush. And we're making the plays back there. That's all we're trying to do. Michigan's 24-3 romp kept the Little Brown Jug in Ann Arbor for another year and kept the quest for the mountaintop on track. The next step, though, was filled with danger. In order to reach the summit, the Wolverines would have to climb through a treacherous place. It was called Happy Valley, and the Nittany Lions lived there. Penn State was ranked ahead of Michigan, and it was expected to be a tight game. But this Michigan team was on a mission. It was a search and destroy directive, and Dadrian Taylor started the Penn State destruction. Side formation, Stevenson at fullback in front of Enos. Second and 10, handoff fake to Enos. McQuarrie swings it out in the flat to the fullback. Stevenson with running room, up over the 40. Oh, did he take that hit oh, at the 40? Man. My goodness. The Wolverine offense was the forgotten unit coming into this game. But they were not forgotten at day's end. Thomas, Woodson, Tooman, and Howard all joined Brian Greasy in the offensive explosion. Streets and Woodson to the left. They've got man coverage out there. Greasy to throw. Woodson wide open in the middle. He hits him on a post at the 20. See you later. Charles Woodson, 37 yards. Touchdown Michigan. They lost them in man coverage. And the Wolverines have stunned the Nittany Lions and their 95,000 fans. They lead 16 to nothing. We've been close all year long, and I think the difference today was that we didn't have any penalties and we didn't have any turnovers. So when we do that, we can't be stopped. Greasy to throw. Looks down the middle for Tooman. Throws it to him. Touchdown, Michigan! Oh, he just took that ball away from David Macklin, who was all over him in coverage, and the Wolverines have a 23 to nothing lead. It was just everybody playing their best game. Uh, you know, from wide receiver to, to center. I mean, everybody played their best game. Under seven minutes to go, third quarter, 24-0 Michigan. Handoff, Howard sweeping the right end, running room down to the 20, down to the 15. Makes a nice move at the 10, the 5, dives over the top of Jason Collins. Touchdown, Michigan! 29 yards for Chris Howard, and the Wolverines are on the board again. They lead it 30 to nothing. We had to cut down on the uh, penalties and the turnovers. We could have we could have been doing this all season long, but uh, penalties stop drives, turnovers stop drives, and you know we just we finally put it all together. We finally cut out the mental mistakes and we just played. By early in the third quarter, it was an incredible 31 to nothing Michigan lead. The Nittany Lions were in complete disarray under the maize and blue onslaught. The Wolverines amassed over 400 yards of offense. 265 of them coming on the ground. Defensively, it was equally dominant. Penn State could manage just 169 yards of offense. Only 68 of them came through the air. And on third down, the Nittany Lions were an incredible zero of 12. You know, we tried to get at them as much as we can. And um, we wanted to show everybody that we could play four tough quarters of football. And that's what we did today. The final, Michigan 34, Penn State 8. A great day to be a Wolverine. And gentlemen, as great a win as this was, we're still on that mountain. The only pro the only difference is we're a little bit higher. Yes. Yeah. 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 The victory over Penn State was clearly one of the most dominant performances in Michigan football history. But it would mean nothing if the Wolverines stumbled on their next step up the mountain. And it was a big step. The Wisconsin Badgers had quietly gotten themselves into position to challenge for the Big Ten title. They were hungry for an upset, and they had the Wolverines on their home turf. Carrying the number one ranking in the nation with them into a cold and snowy Camp Randall Stadium, the Wolverines blitzed the Badgers out of any upset hopes with a first-half offensive explosion. Michigan amassed over 300 yards in offense in the first 30 minutes. On the ground or through the air, Wisconsin couldn't stop them. Thomas is the only setback. 
Fake to him. Greasy rolling right to throw. He's got all kinds of room. He's going to go deep for Ty Street. Open at the goal line. Touchdown, Michigan! Ty Street makes the grab for the score from 37 yards out, and the Wolverines have a 13 to nothing lead. That felt great finally coming through for us and helping us, helping us to victory. I think that was key. The receivers making plays, and we came through today. We just keep got to keep going. With a 16-3 lead at the half, things looked in control until Wisconsin closed to within 16 to 10. At that point, the resolve of this Michigan team showed through. Twice, the Wolverines put together long, time-consuming drives that resulted in scores. One of those drives included four consecutive third-down conversions to keep a vice grip on control of the game. Chris Howard finally finished the badge. Howard and Floyd in the backfield, offset eye, power to the left. That's the wide side of the field. The handoff, Howard, cut back up the middle, down to the two, down to the one, still plowing ahead. He is in, touchdown Michigan! What an effort by Chris Howard to go four yards for the score and give Michigan a 25-10 lead. The 26-16 win was the Wolverines' 10th straight. They remained the number one team in the country, and they had assured themselves of at least a share of the Big Ten title but a share of the title was unacceptable to this group. It's, it's time to be selfish now. Take, uh, take that ring for ourselves. I mean, a lot of guys on this team haven't, haven't won a championship uh, here or in high school. It's my first time being undefeated, and uh, I want to stay that way. I don't want to share the championship with anybody. Only Ohio State stood in the way of an outright championship. The summit was in sight. It had been a long and tough climb, but the peak had not yet been achieved. The Buckeyes, with a chip on their shoulder and upset in their hearts, rolled into Ann Arbor intent on throwing the Wolverines off the mountain. With the largest crowd in Michigan Stadium history on hand, the Wolverines and Buckeyes raged at each other through a scoreless first quarter. Midway through the second quarter, Michigan finally gained control. It was greasy to triple threat Charles Woodson that ignited the crowd. Greasy in the shotgun. Gets the snap from Adam. He sets to throw. Has time. Now steps up and fires. Woodson's got it on a crossing route. 35, 30. Hit from behind by Winfield. Inside the 20 and hauled down at the 16-yard line. 37 yards to Charles Woodson. With momentum flowing their way, Chris Floyd powered the next play to the Ohio State doorstep. And Anthony Thomas completed the seven-play drive with a one-yard plunge into the promised land. But the Wolverines had taken a lead that they would never relinquish. The Michigan defense continued to dominate the Buckeyes on their next possession and forced the vaunted Ohio State offense into a three-and-out. Woodson was now ready to turn the three-and-out into a knockout. He's had one for 55, one for 50, gets a low snap. No pressure, though, and he booms another one. Woodson back. Back, grabs this one on his 23, races to his left, to the 25, splits two men, now to his left at the 40, 45, and there he goes! Charles Woodson down the sideline! He's gonna go all the way! Touchdown, Michigan! Saves the Desmond Howard! Woodson's heroics were far from over. The Wolverines held a 13 to nothing lead into the third quarter, but the Buckeyes put together their only drive of the game to open the second half. They were climbing back in it until Woodson knocked them down again. Let's see if he goes that way. Jackson to throw, looking right. Now comes back, fires in the end zone, intercepted by Charles Woodson. Polish off the Heisman. Fake room on the mantle. Charles Woodson took it away. An end zone interception. The Michigan defense, brilliant all season, was again taking a stranglehold on the game. And in the Buckeyes' next possession, Andre Weathers all but choked the light out of Ohio State's chances. Michael Wiley in a tailback in the I formation. The Buckeyes at their 44. Jackson back to throw. Blitz coming from Sword. He eludes him. Now eludes another tackle at the 40. Gets rid of the ball. Intercepted by Weathers. He's back the other way. He's going to go. 10, 5, touchdown Michigan! Andre Weathers, 44 yards, 19 to nothing, Wolverines. With a 20 to nothing lead, it appeared to be all over, but Ohio State would not fold. 
They clawed back with the help of a big pass play and an uncharacteristic turnover in their own end by Michigan to make it a 20-14 game with 13 minutes to play. It was now time for the Wolverines' defense to prove its greatness. They had to hold the line against an aroused Buckeye team and close out their historic trip to the summit of college football. Three times in the next 13 minutes of play, Ohio State got the ball with the opportunity to drive for victory. Three times they were denied by the Wolverine defense. And in their last two possessions, with the game on the line, the Buckeyes managed just four total yards. The final score, Michigan 20, Ohio State 14. The victory was final, the domination complete. The greatest thing in my life, it really is. Uh, you know, the way these guys have worked hard all year round uh, and, and the way they played and the way they went out there, it, I mean, it showed courage. And then for me, being in my last in my last home game, it's something that I'll remember for the rest of my life. I mean, this team hasn't been been a Pasadena in a long time, man, and it's something that we strive for the whole season. We made a goal early in the season that we would take one game at a time, and it just happened to come down to this game, 10-0. In the past, we came in this game 10-0. We lost all four games, and we didn't want to let that happen. We didn't want to let history dictate what we do today we came out and played a great game uh, things turned against us in the second half but we kept our poise and kept on playing hard and, and got a big win when I decided to come back that was what was in my mind but uh, I never really dreamed that it would really come true I mean we had the toughest schedule in the nation and and uh, you know we were had we had to take it one week at a time and each and every guy committed themselves and and you know that's what's been special about this year Unbeaten, untied, the nation's top-ranked football team, the Big Ten's undisputed champion. The journey to the summit had been achieved. The 1997 Michigan Wolverines hailed to the victor's valiant, champions of the West. Only one step remained for this amazing team. Yes, they had reached the mountaintop, but one job remained. They had to plant a maize and blue block M flag at the summit. It would symbolize this Michigan team staking its claim as national champion. This last challenge for the 97 Wolverines would test all of their skill and focus. In order to complete their quest and etch their names into history, a victory in the Rose Bowl against Washington State would be their final and most challenging step to immortality. While Michigan's 11-0 unbeaten season has been the buzz around college football since the Ohio State victory, the Wolverines haven't stopped making headlines since the season ended. In the postseason awards race, you could say they finished number one in that poll, too, with Charles Woodson bringing home the granddaddy of them all. And the winner. From Michigan, Charles Woodson. <laughs> It's a great honor to be up here. I want to thank the Downtown Athletic Club for inviting me here. Thanks to all the voters, everyone who thought I was worthy enough to win this award. I want to say thanks to my mother, <laughs> the, the greatest lady alive, I believe. While the Heisman was the prize piece of hardware, Woodson's incredible season was rewarded with other awards. In fact, four other organizations honored Woodson for his excellence with postseason trophies. The Walter Camp Foundation named him their player of the year. As a defensive player, he nearly swept everything. Woodson took home with him the Bronco Nagurski Defensive Player of the Year Award. He also was named the Chuck Bednarik Defensive Player of the Year, and he took home the Jim Thorpe Award symbolic of the best defensive back in the nation. Woodson was almost as busy after the Ohio State game than he was when he was actually playing on the field. But Woodson wasn't the only Wolverine accepting trophies. Defensive coordinator Jim Herman, in his first full year as the coordinator for the nation's top defensive unit, was honored in Little Rock, Arkansas, with the Frank Broyles Trophy as the nation's most outstanding assistant coach and head coach Lloyd Carr did not escape the postseason without garnering some special recognition. For his work at guiding the Wolverines through a landmine-filled schedule, unbeaten and untied, 
and ranked number one in the country. Coach Carr was voted as the Bear Bryant National Coach of the Year, and he also received the Walter Camp Foundation's trophy as the National Coach of the Year. With all the awards distractions out of the way, Coach Carr and his Wolverines headed to California and their date with destiny. Three days of hard practice in Southern California toughened Michigan before they moved north to Pasadena. Along the way, the Wolverines saw the sights, were entertained like celebrities by the Rose Bowl Committee. But through it all, they never lost their focus that this was a business trip and not a vacation. That point was brought home at a brunch a few days prior to the game. If they weren't aware of their historical purpose prior to this brunch, they were certainly aware of it afterwards. Members of the last Wolverine National Championship team celebrating the 50th anniversary of their achievement were guests of the 97 team. The 47 team had planned this reunion five years ago and to have their alma mater at the Rose Bowl with a chance to repeat their national title quest was too much of a coincidence. Legends of Michigan, past and present, gathered together. It was a special event for all present. I'm just tickled to death that uh, Lloyd was generous enough to let us share a little bit of the uh, nicety of a bowl game and all the good things that go along with it with the team. Uh, uh, as, I, as I said to some of our group, you know, we planned this some years ago before we knew who was coming, and I said it's awfully nice for Michigan to bring their team with our reunion. <laughs> well, we're having a great time, and uh, we're, uh, I, I wouldn't have believed this would ever happen, the way it happened. It's great to have them here 50 years later, and uh, we're going to have a great time. And of course, our team has maintained that family tradition all these years, and we've been together every five, as you know, and uh, so it's just a remarkable thing. And it's a week not to underestimate as you go through it. It simply will not happen again uh, in the history of the University of Michigan. In addition, there was more support from the Wolverine faithful as a pep rally at Citrus College just outside of Pasadena was organized. Nearly 15,000 Michigan fans showed up and voiced their support along with the marching band as they launched an aroused band of Wolverines into their showdown with Washington State and a date with destiny. Having been charged by their Wolverine brothers of 50 years ago and their frenzied faithful at the pep rally, the Wolverines took the field at the historic Rose Bowl determined to make history of their own. All season long, this Michigan team showed character, guts, and talent throughout their march to an undefeated season. In the Rose Bowl, it was no different. Washington State's brilliant quarterback, Ryan Lee, had staked the Cougars to a 7-0 lead in the first quarter with a TD pass. In the second quarter, they were pushing for another score when Michigan's Heisman Trophy winner, Charles Woodson, turned the game around. Blitz coming, he's back to throw, being chased by Renus, fires in the end zone, intercepted by Woodson! The Heisman winner takes it away! And Michigan ends the Washington State scoring drive on Charles Woodson's end zone interception. With momentum turned, the Michigan offense went to work. Brian Greasy, who had been upstaged by his more celebrated counterpart at Washington State, then decided to show the more than 100,000 on hand at a nationwide television audience that he could make the big play, too. Split backs out of the I formation now for the Wolverines. Greasy to throw. Blitz coming, but Greasy's got time. Deep right sideline. Fires for Street. He breaks up, but he's got it. 10 spot. Touchdown, Michigan! Brian Greasy hits high streets for 53 yards over the head of Lay Jackson. And the Wolverines are on the board. The Michigan score tied the game, and that's the way the half ended, 7-7. Seven to seven. Again in the second half, Washington State broke the tie first with a touchdown. But their extra point was blocked, and a 13-7 lead over this Michigan team was precarious at best. The lead lasted just over three and a half minutes as Greasy and Streets again teamed up to shock the Cougars. Take the Howard, Greasy rolling right to throw. Looking downfield, Streets going deep. The long bomb from Greasy. Streets holds it in, touchdown! He got behind D. Morancola, hauled it in at the five, and Ty Streets has his second long touchdown grab of the ball game. The Wolverines converted their extra point for a 14-13 lead, their first lead of the game, and they would not trail again. The defense rose up to stop Washington State on their next possession, 
but the Cougars couldn't match Michigan the next time the Wolverines got it. Greasy was brilliant as the Wolverines put together a 77-yard drive that showed their character. With the game on the line and heading into the final quarter, Michigan's will was imposed on their opponents. They ran and they passed. They were physical and they were fast. They slowly churned out the yardage. They moved toward the Cougar goal line and destiny. Finally, Greasy and Jeremy Tooman thrust the dagger in the heart of a game Washington State defense. Streets and Shaw out to the left. Two tight ends. Thomas the only setback. Hand off to stake to him. Greasy bootleg right. Firing deep for Tooman. Touchdown, Michigan! Off the play action stake. From all of the running plays, Jeremy Tooman busts open and Brian Greasy on the bootleg. Hits him from 23 yards out. A 21 to 13 lead and just over 11 minutes to the summit. Destiny and history were waiting for Michigan. The Cougars managed a field goal to make it a 21-16 game with just under seven and a half minutes to play. And at that moment, that character, guts, and talent that this Michigan team possessed went on full display. To close the game out and reach the top of the mountain, Michigan's offense went on a historic march. Starting at their own 19, the Wolverines, in the midst of a pressure cooker, slowly but surely started burning the clock. Four times during the drive, they faced third and long. Four times, Brian Greasy delivered. Once, he scrambled for 11 to keep the drive alive. Twice, he found Woodson, and once, he drilled a first down pass to Russell Shaw. For six minutes and 56 seconds, the Wolverines kept the ball and kept Ryan Leaf on the Washington State bench. When the drive ended with a pooch punt to the Cougars' seven-yard line, there were just 29 seconds left. Washington State had no timeouts, and Michigan had reached the summit. They had finished their historic climb to the mountaintop. The 21-16 win at the Rose Bowl had left them unbeaten atop the college football world, national champion. Everybody kept talking about history repeating itself. Well, tonight we set a new history. Michigan number one, baby. Charles Woodson and myself, we talked every day in the summer, and we said if we went out every day and worked hard and played every game, one at a time, we could do this. It's unbelievable. We, uh, we stuck through it, through the criticism and all the years of losing four games. And I'm happy for all the seniors that could uh, be on this field tonight with all these fans and a national championship in our hand. It's the ultimate feeling for this team when no one gave us a chance coming in the beginning of the season. We was rated like 15. No one would believe that we'll be standing at the top of the mountain, 12-0, national champions. That's just the, the best feeling. Well, we all thought that we could have a perfect season. It was just a matter of going out and doing it. This year, we stayed focused game in and game out, and we're here now. You can't take it away from us. As far as I know, this is the greatest victory in Michigan history. This is unreal. And this is, this is what our players deserve. We worked hard for it, and we deserve it. You embraced the pressure. You answered every challenge. You answered every question. You have left a wonderful legacy for every team that ever follows you. You just won the national championship. Yeah. It was Zach and uh, Brian and uh, Rob and Ben. I mean, uh, those guys are, are true friends of mine. And, you know, we've, we've been here five years. And for us to go out on a note like this, I mean, it is, it is something that uh, you truly got to admire those young guys for what they've done. The whole team will have big expectations from now on. Uh, I'm glad I came here this year and won the national championship. I never thought it was possible, but we, we're here now and we did it. Coach Herman was great. He was a great defensive coordinator. I mean, he's a great coach, great man, you know, and, and I think he, he loves the sport. He knows that we love the sport, so he just wants us to give us a chance to just have fun, just go out there and just let loose and just play ball. Coming through in a big game like this, it's a great feeling, but you got to give credit to everybody. I mean, Brian, MVP, played great. I mean, offensive line played well and defense played well. It, it was great. Winning the Big Ten Championship and, and being at home, you know, that was something special. And that's something we can't duplicate here. But, you know, we had a lot of fans come out for this game. And the, the support has been tremendous this year. Ever since I was a little kid, you know, I've dreamed of coming to Michigan, uh, let alone playing the Rose Bowl. Now we're national championship. And it's just, 
I mean, this is is a cherry on top of the you know pie. So I'm just happy to be here. Man. It's, I'm lost for words right now. Man. While the excitement and euphoria of a national championship victory at the Rose Bowl in Pasadena was a magical moment, the celebration of this team's excellence was far from over. When the team returned back to Ann Arbor from their triumph in California, bigger and better parties were in store. A parade through the streets of Ann Arbor that featured the entire team, the marching band, and the trophies the Wolverines brought with them drew close to 150,000 fans, according to police estimates. It was a huge outpouring of support and affection for the conquering heroes, as fans lined the streets in some spots six deep, and the magnitude of the event was not lost on those who rode in triumph through the streets of Ann Arbor. Oh man, this is a dream come true. For every single one of the, everyone on this football team, everyone in Ann Arbor, this is a dream come true. This is great. Hey, we're having a great time with national champs. Hopefully we can do it again. We're having, we having a great time. It's a great experience, you know, it's wonderful. Uh, the big thing is that, you know, they're not out here to watch a football game and they're out here to uh, be enjoy and spend this time with us and enjoy this experience. It's wonderful. Following the parade, there was still more for the Wolverines. A packed Chrysler Arena was their next stop for a pep rally to honor the national champion. The event was carried live on television and radio throughout southeastern Lower Michigan, and camera crews from the entire state were on hand to celebrate with the Michigan team and their faithful. The Big Ten Championship Trophy and the Rose Bowl Championship Trophy were awarded again to the seniors who led this team to greatness. In addition, three separate national championship trophies were on display and awarded to the Wolverines as the spoils of their magical season. The Associated Press Award, the Grantland Rice Trophy, and the MacArthur Bowl, all symbolic of the national championship, were greeted with tumultuous ovations as Michigan's senior leaders accepted each one. Charles Woodson and his Heisman Trophy were given special attention at the pep rally by the Wolverine faithful as the entire evening became another amazing moment in this amazing story. It was a night where the winners claimed the spoils of their victories on the field of battle. It was a night where they claimed their rightful place in football history. All of these years, I would have sworn that coaches were much smarter than writers. <laughs> and I have to admit, I was wrong. <laughs> this team had a mission at the beginning of the year. It was to win each game, one by one by one. They climbed the mountain. At the end of their climb, they didn't beg, they didn't plead, they didn't ask for anybody to vote for them. What they did was they let their play on the field talk for itself. It's also a great honor for this team, the 118th at the University of Michigan, to receive three of the four national championship trophies. I'd just like to say that there were four given out and three sit here, so you do the math. As the evening came to an end, the 1997 Michigan football story slowly moved into the history books. They had started the year with one small step up the mountain. Their goal was to reach the summit. Each week, they took one more step, not looking ahead and never looking back. They overcame adversity. They never listened to the doubters. They never wavered in their belief in themselves and never stumbled on their historic journey. For 50 years, Michigan football had been striving to get back to the summit, to the national championship. In 1997, they achieved the ultimate. They accomplished what no other Wolverine had accomplished in half a century. They reached the summit. Michigan is again 
the national champions. They are amazing in blue.